there will be droughts as much as there's feast. Your main thing that you can control is how you show up. One of the toughest things when it comes to freelancing, doing any independent work, even doing your own startups or being a founder, is when things get tough, particularly when there's a drought. It happens, it's part of the cycle. You might not have done anything quote unquote wrong. It's just the way that things work, particularly in economic climates, which is a more macro scale. And then even with stuff going on with your clients and they might be having their own financial troubles and that affects you. So there's different ways that you can actually get through a drought, getting through these cycles of feast and famine. My name is Damon Brown. This is uh, the Bring Your Worst Show. I come to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. Feel free to subscribe. So one, as far as getting through a drought, you wanna keep your relationships fresh. This is something that works no matter what, is you staying connected to the people that you serve. They're often the people that actually get you paid. We sometimes will only do those connections or do the groundwork, do the networking when we're in a drought. That's not the right approach. The right approach is to continue to keep those relationships connected, even when you're busy, even when it's feast, even when it's famine. Because sometimes we'll get into this crisis situation and then we'll start hitting people up, check our email, check our text, check our social media DMs and realize they reached out to us five, 10, 20 months ago, weeks ago, whatever, and we didn't even get back to them because things were fine back then. But now that things are in a drought, we wanna to talk to them. That's not the dynamic you wanna create. If you want to be a freelancer, if you want to be an independent creator, if you want to own a business in the long term, you have to go after what Simon Sinek calls the infinite game. It's not a matter of winning today, but about building relationships so that you two can win forever. When you're working with a client, they have their particular needs. So it's not a matter of you coming to them whenever you need some money. It's a matter of you staying connected with them because they might need a whole bunch of work and you might be busy but then suddenly you're not busy and they're not interested in hearing about what work you need now. When you're in these feast positions, when you have a lot of stuff coming in and you're overworked, this is actually one of those good times to actually refer that client to one of your colleagues or friends who you think will do a good job with it. You're building trust, you're taking care of your client, of course you're taking care of your friend, but also you're taking care of yourself because they're gonna remember when you hit that drought period, how you took care of them, even though you were extremely busy. The second thing is to build a side hustle or to build passive income. The first one is way easier than the second one, but we'll get into that. Building a side hustle comes down to one simple question. What do people keep asking you for? I have several videos on this. I'll be sure and throw up a link. In fact, there's one particular video about how to find your side hustle. That's really a good place to start. With my own side hustle journey, if you looked at my LinkedIn page or you're familiar with my work, you know I've had a ton of side hustles. There's so many things that I've created while I was having one main thing take care of my main income. One of those things that actually I'm known for that began as a side hustle is being a business coach. As I talk about in my books, most recently Career Remix, one of the things I talk about in the book and in the previous books is that I wasn't planning on being a business coach, but I had my first major bestseller, The Bites of Entrepreneur, which came out about five, six years ago now. And it was super popular. I went on the road. It was fantastic. I was connecting with people from uh, here in the States to over in Bogota to later on, uh, which is Bogota, Colombia and then so many other places around the globe, I was able to have these conversations. I loved connecting with y'all. And one of the things that kept happening as y'all came to my events and started coming to my speaking gigs is you kept asking for more time. Can we get a cup of coffee? Um, do you have a little bit of time after the Q&A? And I was totally confused because I'm like, well, I just did a 45 minute presentation, you know, and I just had a, an hour long Q&A, but you wanna talk one-on-one? -on -one? And then someone flat out asked, do you do business coaching? And a light bulb went off. And I think it wasn't that time, but maybe the time after that, I said, yes, that's how I got into it. Now it's a major part of my income and a big part of, frankly, my career and my identity. That income source did not exist six, seven years ago. It literally didn't exist. It was not on the roadmap. So when you're in a drought, it's a great opportunity for you to make the time to build those side hustle skills. Especially when you're not in a drought, it's even better. One of the things that helps when you are in a drought is building passive income. 
I have a whole playlist dedicated to it. Be sure and check it out. Any of the videos will help you get started. I have about 50, 52 or so passive income streams. They come from my books, my online courses, from affiliates. Those are opportunities that come in every month, every week, in some cases every day, depending on the season. That's called an uncorrelated asset. The market or this particular thing, area could be doing something. And then you have something uncorrelated over here that's doing totally something else. Now, sometimes there are gonna be perfect storms where both of those things are not working out. The passive income's running low and the main income, the day jobs or whatever are running low. But the more you separate those things, the lower the chance of those things happening. We're talking about odds. We're not talking about perfection. You are going to have droughts. That's the way it works if you're doing anything independent. That's the name of the game. It could be macro things. It could be things that are happening locally to your market or to your company. But either way, you're gonna be dealing with droughts. Our thing is to mitigate that risk. Number three, you wanna keep level. Keep level. This is for the good times and the so-called bad times. What happens when the drought happens, and you might be going through this right now, is that you start getting desperate. And in getting desperate, you might be thinking about bending your ethics or doing things that are questionable. And I've had those drought moments where I was thinking about not robbing a bank, <laughs> but asking for things, doing things, pushing things further than I normally would have based on the ethics that I have. It's a tough place. You've got my sympathy and my empathy. I know what you're going through. The thing is, is that this too will pass. So if you're focused on having a short-term career, your uh, startup, freelance career, independent creating, and you only want to be in the game for a few months, that's, that's your call. But if you want to be in the game years, decades, as I have, this is the stuff you want to do for the rest of your life then things are gonna turn around. Whatever decisions you made ethically, while you're in that desperate situation, those decisions are part of your record. They're part of your being, they're part of how you're connecting with your audience. Those ethics, while we're in our drought, will be tested. It's no doubt about it. It becomes a question of what kind of business are you running? If you're able to maintain your ethics, knock on wood as I have, then once you get out of that drought, then your business will still reflect who you are. You wanna show up the same way, whether your bank account has a negative balance or whether you have more money than you know what to do with. That builds trust. That trust actually brings in more money and more ways for you to serve the people that you're serving. The infinite game. Whatever drought you're going through, it will likely end whether it's you ending your business and, and pivoting to something else, or you getting out of the drought and suddenly your customers start to come through with the financial support that you need to keep doing what you're doing. Either way, it's gonna stop. Your main thing should be keeping yourself level as you go through this transformation. Because to be honest, there will be droughts as much as there's feast. Your main thing that you can control is how you show up. If you wanna learn more about passive income, I think that would be a great place to go to next. Be sure and check out my playlist.